Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the new virtual camera inside Unreal Engine 4.26. Now, I know I made a couple of virtual cameras last year, but the camera inside Unreal Engine 4 was actually upgraded and has some pretty nice upgrade to it. And that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. So, uh, like always, first things first, let's go ahead and enable some plugins. So, I'm going to go ahead and go to Edit, Plugins. And the first thing we're going to need is Live Link. So, I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. And then we're going to go ahead and turn on the virtual camera. It's right here. Press OK. I'm not going to restart yet. We're going to keep going here. I'm going to go turn on remote session. I think in my opinion, uh, the whole virtual camera using your iPhone is actually a lot better this time around. It's faster as well. So, uh, And there's not much that you have to do. It's pretty simple. So we have virtual camera, live link, and remote session. And I'm going to go ahead and restart. All right, so we're back in Unreal Engine 4. The next thing we're going to need is actually our IP address. So if I go open up a command prompt, I'm going to type in IP config, and you're going to press enter. And what you actually need is the IP version 4 IP. So go ahead and write that down because you are going to need it here in a second. So I already know what my IP is, so I'm going to go ahead and close this down. So once I get that IP, I'm going to go ahead and go to edit, project settings, and we're going to go ahead and type in transport. And I'm going to go down here to plug into UDP messaging, similarly to, you know, like Axis Neuron. Uh, this uses UDP, so that's good. I'm going to go ahead and enable transport if it's not enabled. And basically right here is where we're going to type our IP address. And then it's going to have a semicolon and then just leave zero just the way it is. So that's why, so you can see right here, I'm only highlighting this portion. So I'm going to go ahead and do 192.168 at whatever it is that you guys have. I'm going to have that right there. And if that's not working, go ahead and change the zero to a 6666, four sixes, and see if that works. So uh, the next thing we're going to do is actually go ahead and delete that. And we're going to go change our frame buffer because this is only supported in 8-bit. So if it's right here, uh, frame buffer pixel is 10-bit by default. So go ahead and change that to 8-bit. And it's actually going to tell you to go ahead and restart once again. Okay, so the next thing you're going to need is the app. So go ahead and download it in your iPhone. Now, I'm pretty sure this only works for like iPhone 10, I think that's the oldest one you can get. But if you have an iPhone or an Apple device, go ahead and try it. But what you need is the Unreal Engine Remote 2. All right, so not the original. There's a new one called Remote 2. So go ahead and download that. I already have it on my phone, so I'm going to go ahead and set that up. All right, so basically on the app itself, all you have to do is actually put in the IP address that we got from our IP config, and that's pretty much it. So I'm going to go ahead and go to Unreal Engine 4. Okay, so back in Unreal Engine 4, now that we have that app in our phone, all we have to do is just go to that iPhone or iPad and type in the IP address and then click connect. I mean, once you open the app, it's the first thing you see is the actual IP address. So go ahead, turn that on and press connect on your iPhone or I whatever device you have. One of the cool things about this new version is being able to actually place a movable actor inside the uh, editor. Uh, before, it's weird because I know I had issues before. It's compiling shaders again. Now, before I was having issues because every time I would start the Unreal Engine remote recording or a camera, it would spawn a new camera. It wouldn't really use the one I would put. I would put. It, it wasn't actually using the one I placed in the scene. But with 2.0, you can actually go ahead and place the camera where you want it. And when we turn this on, it should show up where we actually want it in the scene. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what I'm talking about. So now that we have that, I'm going to go ahead and go to my live link. And I'm going to press connect on my iPhone. And if I go to source, go to this right here, you're going to see remote session, which is my camera. And it uses live link again. It's right here, so you can see. And then if you click on the camera actor here, and you go to VCAM inherited right here. I'm not going to enable it just yet. I'm going to go ahead and change this to camera transform. And if I click, if I look for the is active, click on this. And now if I turn this on, it's going to flip over to my iPhone. So you can see. All right. As you can see there, I'm actually moving around. And like I said, it actually started where I placed that camera which is pretty darn cool. Now we're texture streaming pull over. So give me a second. Let me put my phone down and I'm going to go right here and I'm just going to go ahead and turn off texture streaming so we don't see that annoying uh, pop up. Go ahead right there and I'm going to go ahead and pick up my phone again. All right. And as you can see, 
we're good to go right here. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually go over the changes because there's actually a lot. Now, instead of showing you my tiny little iPhone, I'm going to go ahead and walk you guys through uh, pretty much just the changes here on the screen. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and take a look at our UI here. So you can see it has a really nice refresh to it, which is pretty darn nice. If you've worked with a previous virtual camera, it was kind of messy. And uh, it was pretty crappy, but this version is much better. And like I said, my phone is overheating, but um, let's go ahead and go over what the UI, uh, what the UI looks like. So if you, the top left corner right here is actually your f-stop, so you can change your f-stop right here with just a drag and slide on your phone, which is really nice. And you can select things in the scene by tapping on it if you want. Uh, on the really top middle part is just information i got fps dutch tilt and then you got your focus distance as well and on the top right you're gonna see your zoom your lens settings right there look at that so i can crank it to like 200 mil if i want but i have shaky hands so i'm gonna go ahead and back out and i'm gonna go ahead and close those out by just tapping on them and we're gonna go ahead and work our way to the right side this is the settings right here and what's cool is I can actually click it as well so I'm gonna go ahead and just do that instead of tapping it on my phone because like I said I have an iPhone 12 mini and it's pretty small so you can have the map color right here now this map color is actually for the map here that I'm gonna show you guys later so we're not gonna change that for now all right so you have some start at home settings yes or no off and on you have a rack focus speed if you want that faster you can drag it to the right you have Joystick sensitivity, uh, you also have joystick here similar to the first version, which is good. Uh, film back is just you can change your settings to a Super 8, Super 16, Super 35, Academy, Full Aperture, Vista Vision, IMAX, which is insane. You got APS-C, Full Frame, Micro Four Thirds, I mean everything that you can think of, you can change there. Uh, you can change the actual film back settings there. Uh, if I go to the this little dolly looking tripod thing if i go on that you're going to see some motion adjustments for dolly truck and zoom you can change the speed additionally you can change the translation rotation and stabilization if you have really shaky hands like i do you can actually uh, apply some uh, translation and rotation stabilization so that it's not too shaky so if i go like crank that up to like four as you can see that's really making that thing i mean i have shaking hands but that's doing a good job at stabilizing your footage it's really cool if i turn it off you can see that it's pretty jittery there so if i click right here this is your focus setting you can rack focus using this little slider and it is laggy like i said so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go ahead and use the phone right now you're gonna see me kind of just dragging this up and down and there is some delay in there okay so the pink is actually showing you right kind of like a focus assist if you will in real life so right there that looks like he's in focus all right and additionally on top of that you can do autofocus if i click on this it's going to do a little box and similarly to a dslr wherever i point that it's going to focus there okay see that if i press that button and what i'm going to do is show you this a little bit let's go ahead and be dramatic about it so let me throw everything out of focus real quick i'm going to press autofocus yeah, so pretty much if you drag that reticle around, because you can, um, wherever that reticle is, that's where the focus is going to be. So I can just kind of point around here with my finger, and that's how the autofocus works. It's really nice. Uh, this one right here is actually a tilt and offset button, which I don't see myself using that much. Uh, if you want, you can play around with it. I'm not going to click it for now, which I just clicked. Uh, but basically, if you want to translate and offset the tilt, um, translation and offset tilt, you just turn this on and use the joystick to offset it if you want. So for now, I don't have to do this, so I'm going to go ahead and close this out. Uh, and speaking of the joysticks, it's actually right there. It just shows up whenever you turn this on. And you can also hide it if you want by clicking this button right here. It's going to pop it open. And as you can see, it looks a lot better than the old joystick that we had in version 1. And I'm moving it around right now. Alright, so I'm going to hide this here and let's pop this up. And it's the same exact thing. Uh, right here is the record button. So basically, if you want to record something, you have to unlock it first and then press record. But for now, let's go ahead and lock it, lock it and just take a look at the rest of these settings here. 
so the next thing we're gonna do is actually the interaction mode which is on the left side right here so if I click this I can actually move some objects in my scene so if I click on him and I can actually drag my fingers or write down how much translation I want to give that object per se like this boulder right here you know I can move it Y and it is laggy so so you see right there I can put like 999 whatever number in there and press OK. There you go. It disappeared because it just screwed up that translation. So I'm going to go ahead and Control Z that. I'm going to go ahead and get out of that. But if you want to move the scene around while you're in camera view, you can do that. All right. Okay. So the next area we're going to be taking a look at is the map mode right here. If you want, you can zoom in and zoom out. And you can play around with these settings as well take a picture you can make it full screen if you want but this is kind of like a top view so you kind of you can actually see your scene from the top view which is kind of nice and if you want it shows you where the camera is it's pretty neat you need to add flags make it bigger make it smaller okay all right so moving on to this button right here this is just your animation preview icon so if you recorded something you can go ahead and press play there you need to open a sequencer obviously because we don't have a sequencer so that's why it's telling me that okay and if i go here it's going to show me pretty much all of the files that i did um record but i don't have any right now so let's go ahead and exit out okay so with that being said let's go ahead and put this to use now obviously like i said i jacked up the translation for that rock i have no idea where it went but what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go ahead and turn this camera off for now so virtual camera actor, I'm going to go to VCam. I'm going to go ahead and disable it because first of all, my phone is about to catch on fire. I'm going to go ahead and control Z. Maybe we can bring that rock back. There you go. And what we're going to do is I created a sequencer here by just going to add level and I'm going to go ahead and create one. And I'm going to grab our two actors, put the actors here. And I do have some animations retargeted to them. I'm going to go ahead and grab this guy, and I obviously have to move him to the right spot. I'm going to turn him. And I'm going to grab the Twin Blast. I'm going to go ahead and animate, and I'm going to go ahead and go to, oops, animation. Come on now. Animation. Attack. So now, we have some animation in there. And I'm going to go ahead and control tilde to change that to a different local right here the transform coordinate and I know it doesn't make sense but I'm just showing you guys how to use this thing because you know as you can see it is a little bit off so we're gonna have to move this a little bit and I think it's because I don't know I'm just showing you guys real quick on how we would fix this okay and these animations you can get from the marketplace these aren't mocap animation whatsoever this is just something that i got from the marketplace okay you miss boom you get slapped you gets choked and that's definitely off and like i said what's cool about this is this virtual camera we can actually play in sequencer you know before we would have an issue of it just kind of doing whatever it wants so I'm gonna do some it's gonna go ahead and extend it to 1200 now obviously this is just gonna keep looping but I'm just gonna show you guys you know how you would use this in a situation like this so we have the action now I'm gonna go to one by clicking here press one changes to 24 and let's go ahead and enable our camera and we should see it now and what I'm gonna do is actually record this so I'm gonna go ahead and go to my level sequence and I'm going to go ahead and play this and record it at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and unlock this, press record, and now that's going to play our action sequence. Even though the arms are off, there you go. I'm moving my hand right now, kind of like a cameraman. And if we want to punch in, you know, you can. I mean, that's too close. So let's go ahead and go back out. And as you can see, it's freezing a little bit. That's kind of cool. All right? And if I press stop, it's gonna it's gonna say it's saved I'm gonna go ahead and put the phone down so you can see click here and I'm gonna go ahead and content browser cinematics takes scene one okay and I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the 
camera for now. Okay? If I press play this, if I go to the cinema camera virtual actor, I believe it's this one. No, it's the other one. There you go. Now you can see that recording I did with my phone. And you're going to see that I'm actually going to zoom in and zoom out here. It's pretty cool. This is definitely a lot better than the first iteration of the um, of the virtual camera. And as you can see, the camera cuts right here. And the similar camera actor is right here with the keyframes. And it also has the animations, which is really cool. As you can see right there. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. That is how you use the new virtual camera inside Unreal Engine 4.26. Now, if you want to learn more about Unreal Engine 4, make sure to like this video and subscribe so I know people are actually interested in seeing more of these videos.